You just found a video that might serve as a crucial piece of evidence in your research. You better hang on to it. People deleting their posts or web pages and social media content moderation can lead to the erasure of a trail of evidence that might be crucial in your investigations. When working as an open source researcher, journalist, or human rights advocate, archiving your sources is a crucial step. Bellingcat's auto archiver tool aims to make this process easier. We recently revamped the tool and want to guide new users through these changes. The tool requires a bit of knowledge about the command line. You can check out this video to get familiar with that before you get started. My name is Erin Clark, and together with Patrick Robertson and the Bellingcat investigative tech team, we've worked on improving this tool. The Auto Archiver aims to preserve online digital content before it gets deleted or taken down. At Bellingcat, we consider this step essential in any research we do. In fact, we've preserved thousands of unique URLs for many other Bellingcat investigations. The tool proved crucial, for example, in our work on the Ukraine civilian harm map a project where we work with volunteers to find, verify, and archive digital evidence of civilian harm in Ukraine. We've now made several changes to the tool and hope that these new features make it more accessible for both current and new users. We've built an easy to use interface that lets you create or edit your configuration file, a file that stores your tool's settings and preferences. We improved the tool's support for popular social media platforms, added automatic timestamping of archived media to help prove when it was collected and that it wasn't tampered with, and also introduce perceptual hashing, as this makes it easier to detect duplicate content. And we've just added a new way to circumvent captures and anti-bot measures on websites. We've also published the tool's documentation, in which you can find all the available options and how to install the various new features. This documentation will be kept up to date, so even if some parts of the tool are updated, the documentation is your go-to place for instructions. To get started with the Auto Archiver, we first need to install the tool. There's more than one way to do this, although we recommend using Docker as that's the method that's likely to work best across different operating systems. In our documentation, you'll find a link to the Docker website. There, you can select the right version for your operating system and download it onto your machine. After installing Docker on your computer, you then need to use Docker to install the auto a Docker image onto your device. Open your command line terminal and type docker pull bellingcat forward slash auto -archiver. This will download the auto archiver Docker image, which might take a little while. And that's it. The tool's now installed on your device. If you want to uninstall it, you can just run docker rmi bellingcat forward slash auto archiver. If you want to use the default settings, then you can run the auto archiver immediately. This automatic setup doesn't require any additional information such as API keys, account details, etc. But they're not necessarily the recommended settings for your project. They're just the easiest to get set up. If you installed the auto archiver using Docker, open your command line terminal, move to or create a new directory where your results will be stored, and add the following command. You can find this command in the documentation as well, so it's easy to just copy and paste it from there. In this section of the command, you can add a URL that you want to archive. If you want to archive this video, for example, you can copy and paste the URL of it into your command. A URL from YouTube is a good place to start, as our extractor for this uh, currently doesn't require you to modify any of your configurations. In our documentation, you can find ways to archive from other websites and social media platforms. Once you run the command, two folders will be created on your device. A local archive folder that will contain the archive content, and a secrets folder which holds your configuration and secret key files. Inside your secrets folder, you'll find an orchestration.yaml file that controls which features are enabled and other aspects of your archiving process. Let's say you want to choose the URLs to archive via a Google spreadsheet instead of passing them directly to the command line. It's all about changing our configurations accordingly. Here's how. You'll need to create a new Google spreadsheet and share that with the auto archiver. We've included a helpful sheets template in the documentation, which contains the relevant headers. To share the sheet with the auto archiver, we need to generate a service account.json file. In the documentation, you'll find detailed instructions on how you can generate this file. When you get it, you'll need to move it to the secrets folder we created earlier. In the JSON file, you'll find an email address that will allow the auto archiver to access your file. You can share the Google Sheet with this email as if you're inviting someone else to edit your document. Now it's time to edit the configuration file. When we set up the tool, the two folders were created. In the secrets folder, you'll find a file called orchestration.yaml. That's the file that tells the auto archiver everything it needs to know to run. Let's open our easy configuration editor to edit that file. 
Here we've created a simple interface which shows you the options available you can change in your configuration file. In this example, we'll change the feeder from the default CLI feeder to enable the Google Sheets feeder database. You'll also need to change the database to Google Sheets feeder database down here in order to see the output of the results. After this, you can download your new orchestration YAML file and replace the old version by making sure to add the new file into your secrets folder. Now it's just a matter of adding a URL into the Google spreadsheet. We then go back to the command line terminal and run the command like we did before. You can leave out the URL in the terminal as the tool is now feeding directly from your Google spreadsheet. Depending on your URL, the archival should take between a few seconds and a few minutes, and you can tell whether it is successful by looking back at your Google sheet. You can then check the files archived within your folder, local archive. The tool gives you full control over where your data is stored. The default settings will store it in a local directory, but you can also set up remote storage. Our documentation will guide you through setting these up and how the details can be added into your configuration file. If you navigate through the documentation, you can see what other features or modules you can enable. Each module is documented, so you know how to configure it. And that's it. Archiving the web is hard, especially when logins, captures, and other bot prevention systems are in place. We'll do our best to keep improving our auto archiver and keep the systems up to date. If you want to support us in this journey of archiving critical information, you can download and use this tool, test, give feedback, and develop new features in our GitHub, or donate directly to Bellingcat. And make sure to check out our Discord server. Here you can find others working on investigations and investigative tech tools. This is a great place to ask for help when you're struggling with implementing the tool. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more videos.